Hello! Welcome to Productions MJC. Today we'll be addressing flat earth wind. Comparing the wind on a globe with the wind on a flat earth. On one of my other videos, one of the commenters, Robert, basically said that this can't happen on a globe earth. Doesn't work. And he asked me, well, globe earther, how do planes fly on your spinning ball? We went into some discussion about it, and he asked me, and you know, honestly, that question has never come up. I love this. This is from a flat earther. Condemnation without investigation is the epitome of ignorance. I was ignorant of how planes fly. Robert then made an accusation that this SR-71 is about the only plane that can fly fast enough to land on the Earth, because the Earth is, the globe Earth is spinning thousand miles an hour. And commercial flights are around 500 miles an hour. In order to back up his claim, he basically he said planes seem to take the same amount of time to fly east and west as they do west to east. I went out and grabbed this just off of Google and I said no they don't. It's significantly quicker to fly from New York to London than it is from London to New York. And that's when the question came up. And basically, the essence of his entire claim was, how, how can you even fly from London to New York? If you try, the Earth should spin at a thousand miles per hour under, underneath you, and you would actually be flying backwards. I love to learn. I love to investigate. I've been investigating this. The Tesla turbine is absolutely interesting. It has no real scoops or blades that catch the air. Or water in a water turbine. It works off a principle called the boundary layer effect. As I was thinking about Robert's question, it, it was right in front of me because I had to close a page where I was looking at the, the Tesla turbine. And then it struck me what was going on. You see, in the turbine, the air goes in, and as it goes through, it comes out the outlet, but not just in and out. It doesn't just go down those slots and to the side. There is an, a very, very unique thing that happens in the Tesla turbine. You see, the, the air, as it passes by those thinly spaced blades, uh, discs, it grabs them and as the air flows it starts to form a vortex until it goes out the center and then down in this drawing through a collection system the other one that I showed you it just flows out into air this is basically how the system works and what's neat about the Tesla turbine is it can actually reverse direction. All you have to do is shut the valves off, put the air in or water in the other pipe inlet, and zoom it goes backwards in an instant. I, I've seen the videos where they just take the air supply off, put it on, and back it is again. And it's a beautiful thing because it's not just blowing out the center, it drags that disc around with it. At an incredible speed. Interestingly enough, if you were to spin the shaft of the turbine, the air flowing in those five holes would be reverse drug around and thrown out one of the outlets depending on which direction it's spinning. Very ingenious. Basically a pump or a turbine. I started to investigate what the air looks like. What is the air doing? Now, I'm going to insert some videos where I looked at what the air was doing because I saw a Flat Earth video that suggested you look at the website. And I usually do go to Flat Earth videos, find the information, and then look at it. Not just glance over it, not just go, oh wow, that's cool. I really look, investigate, and research. When Robert first approached me and asked me about airplanes and airplane flight, why doesn't a helicopter just take off 
hover, wait for the ground to pass under it, and then sit back down and, and travel thousands of miles without ever doing anything. This globe, I mean, let, let's, let me get back to, uh, this was the one that they were talking about. I started to study it. And I started to look at it. I ran across the video that explained that this website exists because I was interested in the, the air currents and the ocean currents. And of course, here the ocean current, the air currents seem to be traveling in quite a counterclockwise direction and it makes perfect sense. In Robert's mind's eye, on a flat earth model, you know, he says, look how Everything just seems to make sense. Upon further review, I'm going, wait a minute, all of this stuff is going clockwise around this edge. This is going clockwise. There's a point here where clockwise and counterclockwise meet. I mean, these are clockwise right up against the counterclockwise. Here's a little strange swirl. Here's another one. As you look at this and you start to think, what could make a stationary Earth? The flat Earth model is locked down solid as a rock and doesn't move. It's a giant snow globe. If you sit a snow globe on the mantelpiece, nothing moves the little sparkly flakes in it don't move the little characters inside don't move nothing moves if this is the model we're supposed to believe in with the flat earth what is making that happen and they'll say well it's the sun as it moves around then as the sun moves around it is making the wind and the ocean move in the opposite direction there just doesn't seem to be any plausible explanation how a sun and moon moving in a clockwise rotation can make the water and air move in a counterclockwise direction. It's just counterintuitive. There, I mean, there's just, it, it doesn't make sense. To a flat earther, it makes perfect sense. I don't know how, I don't know why, but there's just no way that that makes any sense on a flat earth. On the other hand, now the Earth as it rotates around on the globe model would pull, due to the boundary layer effect, air along with it up to a certain point and then lo and behold we run into the jet stream. Now the jet stream, is it really moving hundreds of miles an hour in the opposite direction or is it just that the boundary layer effect air next to the earth is moving along with the earth and the air at the high altitudes isn't moving as fast and so when you hit that it feels like it's going hundreds of miles an hour but it would be the same as if you jumped if you were standing in a moving uh, vehicle in the back of a truck and a bicycle was going along at 15 miles an hour but the truck was going at 70 and you jumped out of the truck and tried to land on the bicycle it would feel like the bicycle was going 50 miles an hour in the other direction the more I study this and I'm grateful for the people giving me these videos to look at giving me these websites with the, with this insight I'm grateful for it because there is absolutely nothing that a can account for wind and water movement on a flat earth concept. Wind, they say, well, it moves from a low pressure to a high pressure. Well, okay, Wh where's the high pressure and where's the low pressure if this is going in a continual counterclockwise motion? They say it makes sense. What makes sense? Where is the low pressure making this move Th there's there's no low pressure it's all moving from one area to the other in a perfect circle 
here's a little swirl where there's something going on here. In this real-time display, there's nothing, no evidence of a low pressure, high pressure, sun or moon, nothing. There's just nothing that can make that move. A river has to flow downhill. Where is downhill on a flat disk? Think of air as a fluid. Where is the downhill that's making this a continually flowing motion? The only thing that can make this work is to set this in motion, spinning, but no, the Earth, flat Earth is flat. And it is motionless. There is no motion to it. Well, if there is no motion to a flat Earth, the wind and the water, even though it looks nice and you think it fits, it can't fit. There is nothing, there's nobody shaking the snow globe. It isn't moving. Therefore, this can't happen. It would be stagnant. Especially if somebody's shaking the snow globe, why is this stuff moving in a clockwise motion as this moves in a counter? clockwise motion. If it's perfectly flat and motionless, wind and water movement again slam the door on flat earth. Here's another view. What I've done is I, I've taken the height not from the surface. In the high altitude version and the low altitude version we don't see that any trailing vortices, we don't see any bow shock from moving flat earth, sun and moon. We just see in this diagram constantly flowing wind and water. You see that constantly. For people to deny rotation of a globe earth, here's what a globe earth looks like. Keep in mind I was sent to this website by a flat earther. Now, if we, you know, I, I live roughly here, this is the wind currents. But if you look at this, if you're looking down on top of a globe Earth, and keeping in mind, this is not from a satellite looking straight down. This is from sensors everywhere around the Earth, and the data is collected and compiled and shown to be this way. So these are ground sensors showing wind patterns and they are showing ocean patterns. You can obviously see that if the globe is spinning and the boundary layer effect which Tesla proved is in effect, the air seems to be moving a little slower than the Earth is turning. All I know is looking at this, understanding that the air is moving a little slower than the Earth rotating underneath it. That makes sense. Because once you stop the globe like this website does, the air movement is pretty clear. But the Earth is spinning under it and the air just isn't moving as fast as the globe. It's the perfect explanation. I began my investigation after an injury and I started to look at flat Earth videos and I bought a camera and I wanted to see what was really going on. Keep in mind I was sent to this website by a flat earther who told me, think about what's going on. And then you start thinking what is making a flat stationary rock have air currents that do this. The only thing that makes sense is, is once you start to spin that globe and all is in motion, these are slip streams where the air simply isn't moving quite as fast as the surface of the Earth as the Earth rotates around. The boundary layer effect keeps the air closest to the surface appearing to look like it's moving slower. And at higher elevations it moves quicker, it appears. Interesting website. I, I would love to have you look at it. Uh, it's pretty cool. It Everything gives evidence to me firmer and firmer of a globe because a flat earth can't do this. The, I mean the, the, the air currents on a flat earth can't do this unless the flat earth is spinning. Now if the flat earth were rotating in a clockwise direction the air would not quite move as fast as the rotational speed so 
it would look like this, but everybody says the flat earth is not moving. The only thing that makes sense is whatever we are on is definitely moving. There's no doubt about it. Because the air is not quite moving as fast as what we're on. That's obvious by this demonstration from this website that I was sent to by a flat earther. Let's look at another view. This is a globe projection of the Earth looking down at Antarctica. What makes more sense? That the globe is perfectly still and the air is moving like this? Or that the globe is turning and the air is just not turning quite as fast as it, so that's why we have wind. That's why wind appears to blow, but it's actually the air not moving as fast. That makes a lot more sense than this, where a perfectly stationary globe has this kind of wind associated with it. It just doesn't make any sense at all. If we go back to the globe model, the globe is moving, and if we look down on Antarctica, this is what we get, because it's actually the globe is turning, and the air isn't moving as fast. Occam's razor, pure and simple. Now these little turbines, 30 PSI can get those things whipping 72,000 RPM. It, it really flies, really screams. And they do, they scream as that thing turns around. And like I said before, if you turn that shaft, you can actually get the reverse effect. I've actually seen in these uh, demonstration where they capture this air coming out and they send it to another turbine and with one air supply they can get three of these turbines in a row. That's how planes can fly. As the earth spins around, it traps, pulls along that air with it. Not perfectly, that's what wind is. That's why every day isn't a calm day. That's how air moves. And Basically, when the Flat Earther asks, how do planes fly on a globe Earth? Well, actually quite well. Very well, in fact. Because on a globe Earth, that boundary layer is moving along almost as fast as the ground below it. This turbine is such an ingenious invention. I mean. Can, can you imagine there are no blades in this thing and yet the water going by turns it and it's used uh, you know exhibition or this is actually a working working unit so the flat earthers want to teach controversy they don't want to teach the truth they want to teach controversy Robert wasn't teaching controversy he may actually think that if you lift off in a helicopter, the Earth should spin under you. The Earth should rotate under you. The air should be perfectly still. And you should actually fly a thousand miles an hour to the side. He may actually believe that. But Tesla's design proves that's wrong. The air as this earth turns, the air is moving with it. Boundary layer effect proved by Tesla with his turbine is an actual real experiment anybody can do and it shows that the earth and the air move as one unit because of the boundary layer effect. Jet stream in the North America as we call it moves, seems to move in the opposite direction. That's just because it's not flying as fast as the ground below it. So they would have you believe you live here in a snow globe. You can blow 100 PSI at this and it won't affect the inside. The air doesn't move. The water doesn't move in a snow globe. Air, wind, cannot happen. There's no reason for a low pressure. There's no areas of low pressure and high pressure inside of this globe no matter how big it is. There is no reason for weather inside of a snow globe no matter the size. 
So, the globe earther can actually turn that around and say, how does the wind blow on a flat earth? Do you know what the answer is out there? They don't say. Well, we'll figure that out when the time comes. Go ahead and try to figure it out. They, they quote global earth information, but if it really was a snow globe, there would be no weather, there would be no high and low pressure areas. It, it's all the same pressure. There is no high and low pressure area inside of a balloon. It's all the same pressure. They're inside of a gas cylinder. It's all the same. You couldn't put a sensor in there and find a low spot and a high spot of pressure. It's all equalized. It's all the same. That's an experiment anybody can do. This is fantasy. And I really am appreciative to Robert for pointing out yet again another fallacy of flat earth. It would all be the same pressure inside there. This is fantasy. It can't happen. It just absolutely can't happen. And I'm grateful to him for asking a question I've never been asked. And it, unfortunately, it's absolutely easy to figure out. Biodomes prove it. There is no unified, aka working, flat earth model. Straight from the lips of the president of the Flat Earth Society. And because he tells the truth, they really get upset with the Flat Earth Society for just admitting, yeah, we got nothing. Well, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I mean, that, man, talk about a nail in the coffin. I never even thought about this until Robert pointed it out. But, man, that is a huge 16-penny nail in the coffin. If it was a snow globe, it would all be the same pressure. So don't be fooled by the presentations. They're slick, but once you think, it can't, it can't happen. Please like and subscribe. Spread the truth. Spread the word. Keep the truth flowing. Above all, keep information. I mean, I don't care if they pump out their information because every time they speak, it helps convince me I live on a globe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day. This has been Productions MJC.